Shut up and sit down. Hello, welcome or welcome back to TSC Talks, the podcast where we talk about tuberous sclerosis complex and other related issues. My name's Jill Woodworth and I'm your host. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for listening to Alex Scooby last week. He gave us a little bit of a lighter episode and on today's episode, we're sharing a little bit more of an intense deep dive with my guest, Chelsea Holman. She is from Nevada. She happens to be personally affected by a TSC diagnosis as well as several family members, including her son. We talk a lot about pretty much the full spectrum of life and manifestations with TSC, getting a diagnosis late in life, well, not in her childhood, kind of putting the pieces together after the facts for her. She shares, you know, the struggles of people's judgments and biases, her own coping mechanisms, helping her kids with diet-related issues, as well as much more. I split the episode into two different parts, so we're going to go about 30 minutes today, and the next episode I release will be another 30 minutes. This is really valuable information, and I'm getting feedback from people all over the country where I want to cover as much as I can, share as many different experiences that people might have, so everybody out there can find something that's relatable. I think for me, when I was in the trenches with the medical intensity and getting seizures nailed down with my children that are affected, one thing that really would have helped me back then, and I'm sure it was available on sub-level, but was just to be able to pick up the phone and talk to another parent in similar circumstances and just that validation. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing all the right things. Also to hearing, you know, what maybe I had missed and what was available would have been really helpful. So putting these resources out there for you guys, and I hope it's helpful for many people. And it's also interesting for professionals that might be listening, how the treatments that they prescribe play out at home in individual families, barriers that might be encountered when the circumstances of their lives enable them to adhere exactly to treatments and how we manage that, juggling different medications, diet-related issues. There's so many variables that impact the life, lives of us in general, but when you have a TSC-affected individual or are affected yourself, you know, you're dealing with all different levels of potential landmines from physical, mental health, you know, socioeconomic status can be impacted, uh, relationships. There really is a lot at stake and a lot that we need to talk about. I think our best resource is each other as well as the medical and all the other professionals that work with us, but the moms and the parents that share their information and their resources, their the depths of their despair, their wonderful moments. We're here to help each other, and that's how we're going to find our way through and find better treatments, what works best, um, what works for one might not work for another, and yada, yada, yada. I think you guys know my spiel. I'm really here for you guys. I want to put information out there that's helpful. Go ahead and give me feedback. I'd love it, even if it's painful. And keep tuning in. And I'm going to stop talking and say thank you very much to Chelsea and take it away. Yeah, thanks for being on the podcast. And Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's I'm, awesome. So tell me a little bit about your family or whatever you want to share about the TS. So, How many kids do you have, first of all? Well, I have two boys. Uh-huh. I have a five-year-old who will be turning six here in August. And my youngest is three. So I've got two boys. Mm-hmm. And... I come from a family of five. I have one older sister and three brothers. So it's a pretty big family. Yeah. Yeah. Is your family local? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how how you got introduced to uh, TSC or a little bit. Well, that's kind of like where it's really um, interesting Mm -hmm. is my uh, sister, when she was little, she had. I guess, you know, petite mall seizures, outgrown, but she has the Ashley spot, mm-hmm. the Ashley spots, but everyone, like every doctor we went to, it just kind of said it was, oh, they're just birthmarks, you know, mm-hmm. that come about. And 
every family member of mine has some sort of the ash leaf spots and interesting. I have a bunch of them and I have uh-huh. the small ones as well. But like they look like the freckles. I right. Forget the, right. I forget the name of it. But, uh, yeah, me too. Confetti or I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, the confetti. I don't know where I pulled that like from, that. but you know, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's <laughs> what they call the confetti. Well, I had like petite mal seizures and then I agree of that and where like my hand would fling up or something. Was that when you were uh, little? Or? Yeah, when I was really little. Mm-hmm. And I would get sick a lot and doctors here would yell at me when, when I got into like elementary school or middle school to high school because I, I would get sick every other week. Really? And yeah, and so until I finally got in touch with a local doctor who was at Ears No Stone to we still go to now that I have to take my boys to here and he's awesome. And he treated me and got my tonsils and anoids and everything taken out uh-huh. and it helped me but still it didn't stop me from getting like bronchitis or laryngitis or uh-huh. things that like would just hit instantaneously where like a cold wow. it would take maybe two, three days for it to settle in and then you get sick. Uh-huh. And you know what I have realized from having this condition it hits you less than 24 hours when you get ill and really like quickly with, like really quickly yeah. so then you're like it's not like your average situation for someone right. who might have like a genetic disorder that weakens your immune system and but my seizures when I was little grew into grand mal okay and then became nocturnal grand mal oh and boy. I actually still have them Really? Um, and, yeah. So when funny. were you diagnosed? Were you diagnosed with the skin manifestations? I was diagnosed three years ago with okay. TSD. This is where, it, like, wow. yeah, so, like, because no one could tell my parents what was wrong with me. No one could tell anything mm-hmm. that I was this or that. But it's not that uncommon. I mean, yes, th- like, that I've heard that, you know, it's not that uncommon that people are not aware. So. Yeah, so. When I was probably within like 19, throughout my 20s, about to 23, I was seizure free Mm -hmm. for a few years. Did you get put on meds or anything for seizures? Yeah, actually, I take uh, Topamax. Topamax, Uh, okay. Yeah, that's That's what what helped me throughout my years. And so that's what I take. Uh huh. And still, like, still take to this day. And, but when we were living in the South a a couple years ago, I found out I was pregnant with my second child. Mm -hmm. And how we found that out is when we flew from Reno, Nevada to Louisiana, before we can move into our condo that we were renting because it was under construction and they were just finishing up. So we were going to be staying in a like hotel suite Uh place that my husband's new job was putting this up in for just like the week. Mm -hmm. I... I had a grand mal seizure in my sleep and then they found out I was pregnant and wow. I, that I was two months pregnant at the time uh-huh. and they sent me to a neurologist who couldn't tell me anything and after I after being like being pregnant I only had that one one grand mal and okay but after that I was put on like folic acid and I was monitored. I was sent to a specialist because they heard a heart murmur apparently and they weren't sure. And Mm -hmm. so they sent me to this prenatal specialist who was monitoring him and saying like, Oh yeah, he's doing great. Let's just keep on monitoring the heart and make sure. And then finally this pediatric cardiologist specialist came in because I wanted to check it out. And he was just very like straightforward, like Uh no going around no filter no no I mean like no filter oh, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks but <sighs> he was looking at the ultrasound and he goes yeah your son has wolf parkinson uh white syndrome on his heart and because there are these benign tumors on his <sighs> heart um Oh my gosh, why am I forgetting the name of them? <laughs> the rhabdomyomas. <laughs> yes, the rhabdomyomas, the rhabdomyoma tumors. And he, uh, like, right now I'm seeing about three. And the largest one is right here is on the septum of uh-huh. the heart, is uh-huh. why it's causing the Wolf Parkinson. So I'm going to give you some information and what causes this. 
is tuberculosis complex. Don't Google it or anything, but it's a 50-50 chance to like who can get it. Um, you don't really know until uh, you do genetic testing to mm -hmm. confirm it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like sitting here. And then as they were looking through more and more and he goes, and also down here in his kidneys, your son's in kidney failure because oh, and he's in distress. He's like, I'm not a kidney doctor, but this is an angiolipoma. Yep. I think I'm saying that right. Angiomyelopoma, yep. Yeah, the angiolipoma. And it's making your son's backwash or it's making his yep, kidneys backwash. flare. Oh. And he's not flushing, which is putting him into, into distress. And that's why things are not going so well for him. And he goes, you should be back here within like next week and we'll check it out again, but you need to be induced immediately. And so that's what wow. ha happened. And I got induced with him. How, how far along were you? I was 37 weeks. Okay. So by when so I hit 38 is when they induced me. So he was born on December 29th of 2015. He wasn't due till January 11th or something like that. Like, okay. So he was supposed to be a New Year baby of 2016. And <laughs> he was uh, he just came, under the wire, yeah. Yeah, just just right under there. And so he came, and he was the biggest baby in the NICU. He was in there for, yeah. yeah, and they monitored him, and they started him immediately on um, some heart meds. Mm -hmm. They were going to do surgery on, on his, his heart? kidney. Or all uh, on the on kidney. His, on the kidney. Mm -hmm. Uh, they didn't want to touch his heart because he was too small. They mm -hmm. thought, I'm going, well, he's the biggest baby in the NICU. Uh, <laughs> so they did that, and but then they came back. And I only got to hold him for three seconds. And Oh, my goodness. They, they, they said that he, in the South, you know, people really believe in God. And, yes. And they Bible prayed. Bill. They uh -huh. prayed. They did? They pray, they in the prayed, hospital? Like, in the hospital, they prayed. And like uh -huh. on behalf of their homes because they knew of our situation. And I guess they say that by the grace of God, that tumor on his kidney was diminished by, by that. Not really? Changed. That's because they, that's what they said. They're like, it's gone. But that is the have, first time I've heard this. Cause they were like, wow, he was in so much distress. One side of him was just so bloated. Uh huh. And they kept him in the hospital for another week. So he's in there for like at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, who is 87, she wow. came and stayed with us for a whole month to help me. And God bless her. Well, it was nice because my mom was dealing with my father and helping him out. And uh huh. I then like you know as you are pregnant, your hormones go crazy, things oh, grow I... and like on yourself. And I'm going okay, I need to go to a dermatologist. And that's where I found out with myself because I uh -huh. was never confirmed right with having TSC. Mm -hmm. I go to a dermatologist. They burned off some moles and they burned off some bumps on my face mm -hmm. and they went to go biopsy them and test them. And then I had my follow up and I. They go, I hate to break it to you, but you have something called tuber sclerosis complex because these bumps that were on your face that we weren't very sure if they were boils or not, mm -hmm. they are called angiofibromas. Wow. And I'm going, oh. And he goes, yeah. And the dermatologist is saying to me that, you know, if you're pregnant, especially women with pregnancy who have this genetic condition can bring out those more often with the hormones. And I'm like, it's kind of funny you say that because I just found out my son has that um, like uh -huh. a month ago. So Wow, what a short period of time to get some really heavy and, stuff. And I've been trying to figure out like, hey, I have a history of seizures or I have seizures again now. And I have the ash leaf spots. I have the confetti. I, I've got angiofibromas. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm, wonder. Like, why? Yep. Like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> But apparently, no one could tell me here. and So they couldn't tell you much about TSC? They couldn't tell me much. Well, my mother told me that there is one neurologist here in town locally that said that they might possibly have this condition. But don't ever tell them that they have this because they'll just be made fun of and criticized and 
Yeah. I mean, that was years ago. There was a lot of fear and, you know, secrecy, I think, in previous generations. So 